Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Create Speak. I'm your host, John the Bopper, and today I have a very special guest with me. You may know him as the guy who makes posters and stuff for my videos, but he's also just a very talented artist and a close personal friend of mine. Give it up for Mike Triforce. Whoa, that's me. Okay, so, Mr. Force, uh, uh, how you doing today? Not great, but you know, we, we, we keep chugging. <laughs> you know, yeah, we, we do take those. We do take those. Uh, anyway. We do take those for real. Uh, today I have a couple questions I want to go through with you so that we can have a fun little conversation about art and the things you do with it. Not neat. All right, all right. So let's let's get right into it. So first off, this is going to sound really corny, but what exactly drew you to the world of art? Okay, so there's like a few different things for this one. Uh, a lot through middle school, I used to kind of just doodle, like, in my sketchbook. It was nothing good, it was nothing, like, interesting. I didn't really put much effort into it, I didn't care. And then, I remember in, like, the sixth grade, uh, the Storytime animator boom was happening. So I was, like, watching those, and it's like, wow, they make the picture move. That's so cool. And then I kind of kept that in the back of my head, and eventually decided one day, I pulled out my phone, and then I tried just, like, just drawing some on, uh, like, I, I think Ibis? It, it was one, no, it was Autodesk Sketchbook. It was terrible, but that was the first time that I kind of entered the flow state, and it felt good, and I've just been kind of sticking ever since. Wow. That, that is some awesome origin story, honestly. I think it could rival, uh, who's a superhero? Come on, help me out here. I, there's so oh, no. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to think. Uh, oh, maybe what? Oh, I had one. I don't know, man. I can't think of any superheroes. Okay, well, you know what? For now, I'm just gonna say like superhero man and move on. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, as far as, like, when you actually did start to get knee-deep into art, right? Um, yeah. Was there anything specific that inspired the way your style developed over time, do you think? I feel like there was a couple things. I really, uh, I really enjoyed a lot of st stylized things like Hollow Knight, something that did a lot with, like, poppy, powerful colors. There was also some social media artists that I found that I really grew to like their style. And I feel like a lot of that has influenced like the way I like to make shapes sometimes, but mainly the way I like to use colors and lines. So, um, do you got anyone specific in mind, you think? Uh, definitely. Uh, so first of all, I can... Okay, I'm going to try to figure one okay so there's i feel like a lot more of the uh colors in this regard goes to to uh jack burke who's an artist on instagram they run their own youtube channel subjectively they make really cool shit you should oh, watch I heard it of subjectively yeah it is very fun there um and yeah that's <laughs> That's one off the top of my head. Uh, there were also a few others, but I feel like all of them kind of had like the samey reasons, you know? Yeah. Like there was also obviously Scott Flanders makes like amazing things with shapes is fucking cool. And you like <laughs> cool. and you learned some stuff from him, right? Well, not directly. I, I did one of his workshops. Well, doing one of his workshops, and it's been pretty fun so far. 
that's that's really cool. Yeah. I'm a little sad that you didn't mention me in any of those inspirations, but you know I get it. I understand. You know that. No, no, no. You 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 make cool things. No, no, no. I get it. Wow. I understand. (laughs) Anyway, um, do you think maybe you could uh walk us through how your typical creative process sort of works from the idea to when it's actually a finished product? Like I said. Okay, that's. That's really tricky for me. Um, I'd say I definitely, I, I kind of just come up with an idea loosely, where like in my head, that's just like whenever, like whenever I'm bored, whenever whatever, and then I take some time to kind of elaborate on it in my head, but it still stays a very loose idea until I actually put it to paper, and then I kind of just let the uh, whatever kind of comes out goes down from that. To like fully form the idea. Hmm. So then, what about like <laughs> exactly beat? So, but what about when you're actually like working on the uh, the project? How exactly do you you know take that idea that you've developed and put it onto a page? Well, I just kind of make it how I see it in my head to start just try to map things out uh, first properly compositionally just start on canvas and then sketch it out edit the different the dimensions of it to kind of just fit what it what I think it's going to look like at the end usually usually by the penciling or line art stage I have like a full idea of what it's going to look like mm. All right, well, that's that's neat. Um, is there any, like, tools or specific techniques that you prefer using when you're drawing? I don't really like to uh, be dependent on any kind of specific tool, so I just use a standard pen, like graphite pencil uh, for the sketching, the foundation. I use a custom pen from that's, like, free from the Clip Studio store for uh, inking and then I use both India ink and a soft round brush for colors and values shading all that Neat. rendering okay so um, you and I have worked together for a very long time right yeah I you, you could say that yeah yeah I don't want to. I don't want to be a broken record because I've been saying this a lot, but a little too long. Uh, so, uh, when it comes to making, because you've made a couple dozen posters and thumbnails for me, yeah, over the time that we've like, you know, worked together. So, when it comes to things like the uh, posters, how do you approach translating the essence of a movie that I made or you made with me into a single poster? I feel like, honestly, I have kind of fall short of this aspect that what I like to do is after watching through the movie at least like once or twice through and obviously learning about it from, you know, production, uh, I kind of like to pinpoint on one specific aspect of it, whether it was for seeing spots, uh, you know, the main character kind of like falling in this, you know, like obsession. You mean I kind you- of tried to visualize that with the dot. You mean the absolutely gorgeous poster that was on the billboard I in New York City? Anyway. Oh my god. Um, then, for the notebook, I really wanted to just have it be about the egotistical nature of the scientist. So, I kind of just tried to make it as if he were just drawing on, like, a spare notebook page, possibly from the notebook, of, like, what he was thinking of how he viewed himself then happening in his head. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty solid. I mean, besides your work as far as, like, actual art and post work, uh, you, you've been pretty, like, active when it comes to being on set with us, too. Uh, yeah. So, uh... uh... No, you go. No, 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 you go. You 
I'm, I'm here to let you talk. I'm sorry, this is a bad habit of mine. I was just gonna say, yes, yeah, it's because, as people may or may not know, we took a uh, film together in high school for all four years. Oh, sadly, it I was remember. a fun experience. <laughs> so you remember. Um, John mainly took it to work on his films. I took it to gain perspective on other creative fields and also found that the teacher and environment there were actually really kind of like friendly. And it was just kind of like a nice, uh, just like chill place from school, you know, like it was just, I don't want to say laid back, but it, it was definitely like the nicest environment out of any class I've been in. Oh yeah, and, for uh, sure. I can, I can definitely agree with that. I did some editing here and there for some of the projects. I did some editing on my own for uh, Redacted. Uh, <laughs> but mainly, uh, I kind of focused on doing camera work and have been on set for a few of the John Popper movies. But I have gotten worse with that over time as obviously I'm not really practicing it much anymore. <laughs> So, uh, there's also, uh, Connor, who made, who has kind of taken up that mantle recently. Well, yeah, but you're still, you're still very helpful when it comes to doing things as, like, a key grip and helping maintain the set and doing a lot of, like, you, you do a lot of heavy lifting. I can't say that you're, like, not super helpful. I guess that's fair, yeah. So, uh... Yeah, I imagine that that gives you a lot of perspective when working on, um, like, posters or thumbnails, or just in general, because I know that any experience that anyone gets in, you know, doing pretty much anything can translate into art. Yeah. It all kind of just funnels in, like, outside experiences, experiences from hobbies, whatever just kind of inspires you of how like somebody else did something or of experiences that you had and, like you just draw from that draw the emotion from that draw what you like about that and just kind of funnel it into something that is yours something uh that is your perspective how you see it how you visualize it so um we've talked so we've talked pretty much at length at this point about how um you translate uh, stuff from a moving picture to a static image, but we haven't really talked too much. We haven't gone too deep into the challenges that you face when doing that. So I would, I specifically would really love to hear what what kind of issues do you face when making posters, specifically. I feel like I'm kind of tone deaf a lot of the time when trying to capture a specific feeling. Like, uh, for example, the Seeing Spots poster, it kind of looked more action-y, adventure -y than I kind of would have liked, and it didn't really fit the tone of the movie as being comedy. There's also a lot of, you know, uh, scale things that I kind of struggle with, uh, mainly if you kind of look at uh, some aspects of the other posters, but uh, the Seeing Spots poster as well, you can see some anatomical errors here and there, you can see sometimes the facer there doesn't look right because you know it takes a long time to develop those skills and i'm still on that road okay but i still think that the seeing spots poster is gorgeous and one of your best works we'll agree to disagree no no agree to agree you have to you have to learn to love yourself man you know honestly god this can, you had a lot of this guy am i right chat uh can we get um can, can we get um a nerd sound effect please you were kind of cutting out there, but all that matters is that I played the sound and it was really quiet anyway. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, uh, as far as just general projects, we're not just talking posters anymore. Is there anything that is there anything you've ever worked on that was particularly challenging or memorable? I kind of like to. I'd say a lot of the pieces I have are somewhat challenging because I like to do something that I haven't done before in each of them to know, you know, gain that experience. Right. Um, so I, I'd say, like, 
some of them specifically are memorable, but then again, I couldn't really talk about them because 90% of what I make I never share on my uh, dead, uh, Instagram account. Which you can follow, by the way, at Triforce03. Oh, yeah. Also, uh, commission this guy. There's a, there's a link in his bio, and there's probably going to be a link in the description of the video version of this. Yeah. Uh, so if you want mediocre stuff, commission. <laughs> you mean if you want absolutely gorgeous painting-like pieces? Yes, commission. <laughs> I, I know you're going to say that I'm hyping you up a little too much, but I think this is the right amount of hype. I disagree, but let, let, let's continue. <laughs> well, fine. You know what? If you want to be so down about it, then how about this question? Do you have a favorite piece you've worked on? Uh, that's a difficult one. Uh, I'd have to say... <laughs> I actually have to think on this for a second. Jack, can we get some crickets? Okay. I have to say a favorite piece I worked on. I think I actually did post this on either Twitter or Threads. It's of, uh... Like this guy, um, it's kind of hard to describe it. Uh, with um, <laughs> okay, it has like a purple background, a blue, like kind of shape with broken fragments of it. Uh, kind of uh, like a staticky, like broken effect on a helmet he's wearing, as well as a uh, the cell phone he has. You see where the bad at articulating things come along. But yeah, I'd say that's probably my favorite because structurally it's kind of meh, but I really liked the way I used the bright lights and the colors in it. And I think the shapes uh, in the background are... It, it's eh, but it, it's pretty... I, I like the idea. Hmm. Alright, well... I mean... I guess one other thing I could ask is, um, are there any other, are there any like risks that you you've taken artistically that impact your work in any significant way? Uh, deadlines. Uh, there have been time when I've played with deadlines and gone and burned because. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, uh, but seriously, I mean, you it's it's never been too much of an issue. Honestly, I mean, I know I bug you about it a lot, but I think part of it is just that I'm super impatient, so... Which is understandable. I mean, sometimes it is, but sometimes I'm a little much, I can admit that. That's fair. But, uh, yeah, so, I know that you don't really have, like, a community or like really an audience that looks at your art much outside of the things that you've made for me the things that you've made like that you have shown publicly but uh do you, what do you hope for the people who do see your art to take away from it i feel like i want them to take away that even if you start from nothing no experience no whatever you don't have to draw from like early childhood you don't necessarily have to have specific advantages other people have to try to obtain an art goal but you can everybody has their own pathway of doing it and finding yours even though it may be different than others even though it may not include certain experiences others it's equally valid you know it's funny you say that because um that like like your your artistic journey kind of like contrasts with another guest we've had on the show, Lily, who has been drawing practically since uh, they came out of the womb. Uh, how do you yeah. how do you think that that's like shaped both of your perspectives on art? Like in what way? Like in the way that you see like the like making art. Like, do you think that you see it any different than Lily might as somebody who has, like, a lifetime's more experience than you 
uh, even though you managed to catch up relatively quickly. I might just say that I feel like a lot of what I do has been more, uh, except for ideas, really, a lot of what I've done has been more deliberate. I feel like I've taken every kind of thing I've done as a new learning experience to try to catch up as fast as I can, which may not be the best thing, but that's the way I've kind of always thought about it going forward, because I, I just want to keep like getting to that next level over and over and over again. Mm. so that I can catch up to those that have already made it, those who are kind of at the age group where I'm at now that have been drawing since childhood. Honestly, like, I've, I've been keeping up with your work for as long as I can remember, and I think you've, like, like your improvement is honestly one of the biggest things that inspire me. Oh, well... Because, that's actually <laughs> crazy yeah because like you know i look at you you're you're struggling to you know catch up to people who are, are i guess like if you if you look at it in the terms of a race these people are leagues ahead of you because they started earlier and you you know like you're the tortoise they're the hare you know yeah and i think that that there's something really like special about that and being able to see like that race firsthand you know I, I think that that's like really impacted the way that I see art oh but uh yeah so I, I guess you could say uh you're you're pretty artistic right yeah like like how artistic I, I, I... even I, I am artistic. Wow. In the mouth. <laughs> so, uh, y did you know that there's a community for that? Like, like there's like there's a bunch of artists apparently. I didn't know this until like just. I now. didn't know this either. I just I just it. thought like uh, I thought people just kept getting uh, posting stuff from Google Images forever. Yeah, I know, right? Honestly, it's kind of staggering to me. But uh, as yeah. far as like other people in the community of artists online or in person or wherever you may find them um how do you think that really influences your work being able to see other people's art and being able to engage with the people who make it i feel like being able to engage is a great way to like gauge where you are uh just there are some like it's not you use the race example there but it's not really like that. It's more of kind of like an RPG character. It has like different stats. Some people upgrade uh, one stat before the other stat. Some people put all their shit in the HP and you know, that's <laughs> that's valid. But uh, no matter kind of where somebody's at, there's a good chance that they're going to know something uh, more about something than you do at, the, at a certain aspect and vice versa and being able to engage and kind of learn what each other know is like a great resource and trying to get better now, as far as seeing others art people's art online i feel like that is just amazing for inspiring others to be able to decide to you know do it themselves it's like if this guy can make this why can't i and i really like what this person made and i want to be able to do that too but also at the same token i could feel it is damaging because if somebody posts like something that, uh, that took them like 200 hours, you're only seeing the image. You're not seeing the work that goes behind it. And that can make you feel like, oh, why am I not there already? Oh, why am I so behind? Why uh, are, is everyone around me so much better than me? But in reality, it just is they had so much more time. They put in so much more work and you're just not at that level of your journey yet like you'll get there but it, i feel like it makes a lot of people impatient right no i i get that you know like i guess there have been times where i feel like i'm falling behind in comparison to other people it's it's not like often because you know for a very long time i've kind of been you know sort of at the front but then, you know, you reach things like college and you start to see that, like, you are one 
in a million. Yeah. Like you're 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 out of you're the big fish out of the small pan p- small pond now. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, I've I've kind of taken it in stride because it's like, you know, the way I see it, it's a chance to meet more people on my level, meet more people who can challenge me, meet more people who can, yeah. you know, who I can learn from. You know, honestly, that's the way I've always chosen to see it. And that's like perfectly, that's a healthy way of looking at it. But, you know, I feel like it, I'll, you can look at it, it depends on the person. Some people might look at it that way, but it might seriously affect other people's self esteem, you know? Right. Yeah. And I feel like that's less of like an art thing, and that's more of a social media thing in general, of it just being out there on the internet accessible. You see like a bunch of different things for a bunch of different people at a bunch of different stages of their life, at a bunch of different stages of their artistic journey. It's just, it's just kind of, right. yeah. So, like outside of our immediate group, have you ever worked with anybody else on an art project? Uh, I don't think I have. Uh, officially, no. I've, I've kind of been on my own for a lot of things. Oh my god, you're like the second person to say, you people need more friends. Please. Look, collaborating with people's hard. Just like, do better. <laughs> do better. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so I guess, uh, there's, a uh, so, what kind of advice would you give to somebody who was in a position that you were in when you started? I'd say, immediately to start, use the internet wisely. Like, use it, don't have artists that, uh, don't just have, like, art there that you're scrolling through all the time that puts you down uh make sure whatever you have from that kind of side of things only kind of helps uh get you pumped up inspires you and also use it and that's a valuable resource so much information on that use that to teach yourself teach yourself early the basics and then just as soon and just focus on that for a while block out what, how everybody else is going, how fast everyone else is going. Take your time and just try to learn as much as you can at your own pace. So, it sounds like over time you've gotten very invested in art, right? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> just a little bit. So, um, do you do you do anything else? Do you, do you have a hobby? Do you have, like, stuff? Or are you just, like, lame? Oh, I'm just kind of lame, and I'm even lamer because uh, in in the 15% of time I'm not making art or 30 or 30, I don't know. I haven't measured this, but I mean, they're just, uh, I kind of just do whatever people do. I, uh, I watch movies, watch YouTube, sometimes video game. You breathe sometimes. I breathe sometimes, yeah. Yeah, sometimes you, uh... Oh, sometimes you sleep. I also sometimes like to go out, uh, socialize. Did uh, you do that? Since when? Since whenever. That's what you people are for, I thought. But oh, but I'm not around. Also, also, uh... I have a friend who's into... Well, Connor... Why am I saying a friend? It's Connor. Yeah, it's Connor. He's into, he's into a lot of tabletop and uh, very unfair, unbalanced card games. So we kind of just have fun with that sometimes. You know, I'm really glad you said that. I'm so glad. Thank you. I don't know. I feel vindicated. Why? <laughs> that they're unfair. Oh, they are unfair. Oh, ridiculously. <laughs> yeah. John tries them sometimes, but it, it's just... <laughs> I, I usually end up crying if it isn't Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> and sometimes even if it is Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh. So, uh... Yeah, I... I guess, um... 
the last thing I want to ask you is if there's anything you want to plug. Artistry, Instagram. Are you gonna like say where people can find these, like like URLs, anything? I don't uh, do. I don't know the URLs off the top of my head. Well, there's artistry uh, slash artistry force. Triforce Instagram slash Triforce underscore YT, I think it is. No, it's and I also, I also, sometimes, okay, so you have to do this thing, right? Where you quit, gather a bunch of people, you have to perform a sacrifice on the 31st day of the month when all the planets are aligned and the moon is waxing. And that will cause the one in a million opportunity I actually stream on Twitch. Oh yeah, Triforce underscore TW. Yeah. But wait, the moon is never waxing at the end of any month. It's always a full moon. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so well, that's it. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much everything. Thank you for your time. And uh, your money. I'm stealing your money. You can't stop me. I'm uh, stealing your money. I, I, I need to cancel my cards now. Okay. Bye, Mike. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Alright, guys. So, that was the episode. Um, next time, we're going to have uh, our good friend Connor, who we were talking about at the end there, join us on the show. So, if there's anything you want to ask him, just... Uh, let me know in the comments. He writes, he arts, he does all sorts of things. Uh, you've seen him around on my main channel and everything, so just go, you know, just go do that. So, yeah, I'll, I'll catch you guys next time. Bye!